It was Dodge's answer to the Thunderbolt. And something that technically we've already covered, but a minute and a half is not enough on the legend that is the Dodge Dart Super Sock. a little bit of background about the dart. It was sort of Dodge's jack-of-all-trades. It was a two-door, a four-door, a compact, a convertible, a station wagon, a taxi, and even most recently, a pile of junk. But soon it turned into Dodge's chief weapon of war in the drag race wars of the 1960s. You see, in 1964, Ford had entered NHRA drag racing in the production class, aka SSB, with the 1964 Fairlane Thunderbolt. It was a monster that could do the quarter mile in 10 seconds in 1964, and Dodge had to have a response. So, two years later, they came out with a thing called the D-Dart. They followed a Pretty simple bit of logic. Big engine plus smallest car equals fastest car. So they put the 273 cubic inch V8 into the two-door version of the Dart and entered it in NHRA D-stock class racing. It made 275 horsepower and weighed under 3,000 pounds, which is a pretty good power weight ratio these days. But that wasn't all because this is a drag racer, so it's supposed to be designed for the strip. Which is why I was filled with a four-speed manual with a Hearst shifter, bucket, seats, a Weber clutch, and, and no warranty. Here's the thing, though. Unlike most homologation specials in the drag racing world, this looked exactly like its normal vehicle. There were no special badges, there were no warranty labels or lack of warranty labels, no plaques, nothing. It, it just looked like any other two-door dart. Except for the fact that it could do the quarter mile in 14.3 seconds at 92 miles an hour. In fact, it won that year's NHRA Stock Eliminator class. So there, Ford, in your face. But it's not like there were many. You see, Ford made a lot, relative speaking, of the Thunderbolt. Meanwhile, Dodge made a whopping 50 of the D-Darts in its sole year of production. But by 1968, the drag racing world was getting even more extreme, so Dodge decided to dream a little bigger and go from D-stock drag racing to full-bore super-stock SSB-class production cars. That meant the 273 cubic inch just wasn't gonna cut it. So, they also dreamed bigger with the engine. The super-stock Dart, as it was called, got either the 440 or the 426 Hemi. These massive 7 liter V8 monsters were then fitted with new carburetors, beefed up cooling, a larger oil pump, a new aluminum air intake, and an absurd 12.5 to 1 compression ratio. Now, in order to handle that absurd amount of power, which was conveniently 425 horsepower for insurance purposes, but in reality it was closer to 600 horsepower, they had to beef up the clutch, the suspension, the gearbox, the shifter, and the rear axle. Then, since beefing up all that stuff was heavy, they had to cut weight as much as possible, so the body was made out of fiberglass, the rear seats, air conditioning, center console, sound duffing, side mirrors, carpeting, radio, and armrests were all thrown out of the interior. And finally, just for good measure, the battery was moved to the trunk, and it got some road legal drag tires from the factory. I mean, the gearbox didn't even come with a synchronizer to reduce the chances of a missed shift. It weighed 3,000 pounds, with 600 natural gas sprayed horsepower on tap. Now, I know you're thinking, how the hell is that road legal? And, well, all I can say is, um, 
regulations for crash safety didn't really exist back in 1968. So, it wasn't really necessary to worry about crashing it or safety or anything. I mean, even Chrysler themselves said, sure, it was road legal, but um, we're not going to give you a warranty, and the vehicle is only suited for, and I'm going to directly quote them here, supervised acceleration trials. Wonder what that can mean. Only 80 of these LO32 packages were ever made and can now go as high as 250 grand at auction. That's a very expensive muscle car. It's one of the most expensive Dodges in the world from this era. So, the statistics and the amount of effort they put into this vehicle is downright biblical in many ways. So, how'd it do? Well, because the gear ratios were specifically tuned for drag racing, the top speed, despite having over almost 600 horsepower, was a bit terrible. At 130 miles an hour, it would buzz the limiter in fourth gear. However, because it was a 10 second car, that's what his goal was, they um, reached that 130 mile an hour top speed in under 11 seconds. It went from zero to 130 miles an hour faster than a modern day crossover can do zero to 60. And this was 1968. On the drag strip, it had a verified quarter mile of 10.46 seconds at 131 miles an hour. That is two tenths of a second faster than the Ferrari the Ferrari and a half a second faster than the most modern C7 ZR1 Corvette. With modern drag tires, it can do the quarter mile in the 9 second range. It was the fastest accelerating road car in the world for decades. It absolutely dominated SSB class racing until the entire system was overhauled in 1971. And to this day, it is the only 1960 spec package to have its own NHRA class that still competes right now called the SSAH, or Super Stock A Hemi. Dodge would sh when Dodge would shed away from drag racing for quite some time with collaborations with Shelby on the Omni and then the Viper. And it wouldn't be until 2018 that a vehicle even resembling the Super Stock would come back. Only this time it didn't have the Super Stock name. No, it was much more evil. In 2018, Dodge unveiled their next Halo car after the ACR Viper. The Demon. It was an 840 horsepower, 2 ton behemoth. That could do the quarter mile in under 9.7 seconds at 140 miles an hour. It was another masterpiece of drag racing engineering. The sway bars were hollow because you're just going straight. The rear brakes were smaller because you're just going straight as fast as possible. It could run 100 octane fuel. It even had skinny tires you could buy from the factory for a dollar. It was the modern day, slightly safer version of the Super Stock. And an amazing piece of machinery that, once again, like the Super Stock, they only made a relatively limited number of. And it's still, right now, the fastest quarter mile car in the world. Faster than any electric Tesla, than McLaren or Ferrari, faster than all of those things. Even faster than the Veyron and the Koenigseggs. Nothing, in terms of production cars, can even come close to Dodge. And I can imagine the Superstock looking on from far, very proud.